Hi, I'm Brad Brown with the IHSA. One of the things we notice when looking at hoisting and rigging operations in construction is that oftentimes workers don't know the potential advantages and disadvantages of each of the different types of rigging equipment that they come across and often they don't know how to do a proper inspection with that piece of equipment. So today we're going to be talking about wire rope slings, what their potential advantages are, what some of the disadvantages are, and then some things to look for on an inspection. Now I do want to note that of course we have to make sure that we follow the operator's manuals and the manufacturer's instructions for the specific type of sling that you're using. This is more of a general overview than it is a specific for your type of equipment that you have. So when we look at our wire rope slings, it's important to understand their construction. Wire rope slings are made of individual wires wrapped around strands, which then in turn wrap around a wire rope core. This is really key because it means that there's not one single point of bearing pressure. Each wire distributes the weight which means that there's less chance of catastrophic failure of this device. Now another really important aspect of our wire rope slings is because we can see the wires in our inspection, we can often check for deterioration over time. Unlike some of our other slings which can deteriorate very very quickly, wire rope slings we can often see that deterioration happening and then know to take that sling out of service. A potential advantage to our wire rope slings is that they're resistant to UV degradation and they do resist cutting and abrasion to a certain extent. Now one other thing that we look at with our wire rope slings is that they can be used without the working load limit label. Because this label will often fall off when in general use, these slings can have a calculation done called a field calculation which allows us to figure out a working load limit for this device to be used in the field. So we've listed some advantages to using wire rope slings, but it's also important to understand their limitations as well. With wire rope slings, we have to be really, really careful because they have the potential to corrode or rust. If they're not stored or serviced properly according to the manufacturer's instructions, then there's that potential for them to rust because they are a metal component. We also want to note that our wire rope slings are less flexible than some of the other sling varieties, which means they don't necessarily hug the load as tight as we might want with, say, something like a synthetic sling. The other thing we have to worry about is once they're being used in the field, there is a potential for sharp edges and protruding hazards on our wire rope slings as individual wires get damaged, which means that once we are using these in the field, we should be using cut resistant gloves to inspect and to use these devices. The other thing we have to worry about is if they're used incorrectly, there is a high potential for these to kink, bird cage, or crush under heavy load. So we really want to be sure that we use them in the manner that they're designed to be used for. So when we do our inspection of our wire rope slings, I like to start at the eye connections. Now when we look at the eye connections, we're going to make sure that we check for any damaged wires around the outside and make sure that there's no damage here at all. We also want to pay special attention to the areas where the most bearing pressure is going to be. This is the location that's going to hang largely from our crane hooks or in our choked areas and this is the spot that's likely to get a lot of damage and wear over time. In addition we want to check down at our eye connection. These Flemish eyes are made at the factory and they're pressed under huge weight. If we see any slipping of any wires out here or pulled wires or damaged wires anywhere around this connection, we need to take it out of service because that indicates that they've pulled out of this connector. Once we've inspected our eye connections, it's time to start inspecting the rest of our sling. Now one of the first things we need to look at is we need to check for broken wires along the length of the wire rope sling. Now the construction regulations tell us that we're not allowed to have more than six broken wires in a lay, which means the distance that it takes for one strand to go from one side and back around to the other. So a lay on this wire rope sling is about this long and we're not allowed to have more than six broken wires within this distance. In addition, we're not allowed to have more than three broken wires in one strand in one lay. And this is what the construction regulations tell us. However, you need to be careful because different manufacturers might have more stringent criteria for replacing your wire rope slings. 
As we look along the sling, we want to make sure that we check for excess wear and scraping. As we use these in the field, they wear down, they scrape, and they reduce in diameter. And each manufacturer is going to tell you how much diameter loss is allowed before you have to take the sling out of service. We want to check for kinks, crushing, and bird caging along the length of our wire rope sling. The real key here is to look for any wires or strands that have been shifted out of place. If they're moved out of where they're supposed to be, this is normally a sign that we need to replace the wire rope sling. Of course, slight bends are allowed in most cases. You need to use your own good judgment when inspecting your sling and follow your manufacturer's instructions. We also want to check for discoloration. Discoloration in a wire rope sling can mean one of two things. It's either rusting or corroding, or when it's exposed to high temperature, wire rope slings will change color. We also want to verify that our lays are not increased in length from one area to the next. This can happen very easily when we have a wire rope sling that's under heavy load and it rotates while under load, it can cause the lays to unwind and lengthen. We then of course want to check for any ground in contaminants, right? Construction sites are pretty dirty places and we might have these sitting around or wrapped around dirty loads. We want to make sure that there's no ground in contaminants or any other damage along the length of our sling. A few final notes about using our wire rope slings. We want to oversize our slings wherever possible. The working load limit for all of our slings is set by the manufacturer at a factory under perfect conditions with new equipment. Now when we look at the world of construction, we know that very rarely are we under perfect conditions in perfect environments with brand new equipment. So if we oversize our slings and increase the working load limit on them, we know that we're going to be adding a safety factor in place. We want to ensure that we store our wire rope slings in a cool, dry and dark location in order to make the shelf life last longer and reduce the chances of, of additional damage that will make us have to take it out of service. Of course, I want to refer back to the manufacturer's instructions because the manufacturers might have different replacement criteria and use criteria than what we've discussed in the video. Thank you very much for watching the safety talk on wire rope slings. Please visit our website at www.ihsa.ca and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more safety talks.